McMurphy from the hit television series China Beach. Delaney has gone on to the silver screen this summer. This Emmy Award winner is a native of Manhattan. Uh, she moved to New York to pursue acting, first in television commercials, appearances on some soap operas. She soon turned up on the small screen as the Bruce Willis ex-girlfriend in Moonlighting and as Tom Selleck's lady friend in Magnum P.I. Uh, her most recent appearances on the big screen include the motion picture House Sitter with Steve Martin and Goldie Hawn, which is now in release. Uh, and she also has a, a role in a picture called Light Sleeper, in which she plays the part of a former drug dealer. The two pictures indicate the range of her talent as an actress, Dana Delaney of China Beach, with us on the radio show for Tuesday night. We are back and joined by Dana Delaney, the great star of China Beach, which is sadly now off the air. Also one of the stars of House Sitter, along with Goldie Hawn and Steve Martin, in release this summer. And also a picture which is called Light Sleeper. Is I, I believe that's on the screens now, is it not? It's open in New York. It will open here September 4th. Anyway, welcome to these microphones. I'm an enormous fan of your work, and I love you in the pictures, and I thought you were terrific in House Sitter. Oh, what a sweet, you. sweet show. <laughs> Was it as much fun to make as it looked like? I mean, just what a wonderful show that was. It was fun. Uh, but, you know, the cliché comedy is hard, um, especially for me because I hadn't done comedy in a, in a while. I used to do it all the time. I find that the set of a comedy is a little bit more serious than the set of a drama for some perverse reason. Wow. You would think it would be the exact opposite. Yeah, well, because in drama you need the break, so people are always, you know, cutting up and, you know, playing jokes on each other. Whereas but but not on the comedy set. The comedy, it's all about timing and energy, so you got to keep it up and concentrate. I think it takes more concentration. Now, will you be attending the Emmy Awards this coming Sunday night? Yes. And what will your function there be, a presenter? I'm presenting, and also I'm a nominee. Uh, for... China, China Beach, Beach. It right. lives on. Right. It's never going away. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that would be hard, though, difficult to uh, to be a nominee for a show that's not on anymore. Well, they're supposed to judge you on one episode that mm -hmm. you submit, hopefully. Who knows? And so you go there and you present, and you're a nominee, and um, if you win... It's kind of like hitting a home run in the last game of the season, even though your team has no chance to go on to the World Series, I guess. Yeah, it would be a nice parting gift. That's sort of how I look sure. at it. What was the wind down of that show like? It was such a successful show. It really touched those of us in the audience who watched it. And as it was winding down, you know, we've all gone through the MASH demise and the Mary mm -hmm. Tyler Moore, et cetera, et cetera. What's it like when that winds down? For the people acting on yeah, it? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know about everybody else. I'm someone who likes to move on and not think about it. And I won't I won't think about it until maybe a month later, and then I'll maybe go into a bit of a depression. So I was ready for it to be over. Mm -hmm. I was kind of excited about the change. I like change. And when it's coming to an end, do you know what the change is going to be? Do you know what the next step is? Did you? No, I had no idea what I was going to do next. No, I think, uh, well, the first thing was a light sleeper, and that was... Two months later. And then well, House Sitter was done? Uh, no, actually, I shot House Sitter right after Light Sleeper. It just, you know, magic of Hollywood. It yeah. Was first. <laughs> yeah, you, ne you never know when your Christmas show is going to run. Yeah. Nah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I know what you mean. <laughs> now, Light Sleeper, this is a, it, it seems to me, and I have not seen this picture. I've seen House Sitter, mm -hmm. and I saw you in Moon Over Parador, and I saw you in China Beach. But it seems to me that this is a bit of a stretch for you as an actor. Well, it's funny. People have said that, but compared to China Beach, it's no different. Because in China Beach, I played an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And especially the last season, I was going through a lot of post-traumatic stress and that kind of stuff. I was in rehab there. I was in therapy. And I play an ex-addict in, in Light Sleeper. Um, so it wasn't that different for me. Really? Like, I, like I said, probably to go do light sleeper. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's a different thing because it's a Paul Schrader movie, and, and I had worked with him and Patty Hearst, so I was aware of, of what he was like as a director already. 
You know, I interviewed Paul Schrader in New York about a year and a half ago. I went back there to do some programs for NBC. And he had a picture coming out at the time. I cannot remember the title of the picture. He is a, he's a very intense man, <laughs> yes. to put it mildly. <laughs> yeah. And he, I said to him, I wish I could remember the name of this picture. It, it did absolutely no business. Mm. But I said to him, it's a very dark picture. And he thought I was referring to the storyline. I said, well, that too. I said, but also, in the way you shot the picture, you really have to strain to see things because it's almost in total darkness, these scenes. Was it Penny Harris? Cause no, that's, no, no. It was really dark. <clears throat> no, this was, this was a picture about a couple who are vacationing in Europe and they pick up a oh, comfort of strangers. Comfort of strangers. Yeah. A tough picture to watch and a very tough picture to talk about because although I saw it, I didn't get it. Yeah. And I mean as since he was a guest of mine on a program, I didn't want to say that to him. But I'm sure by the line <laughs> of the conversation he felt, geez, you know, Tom does not really understand what this picture is all about. But, you know, it's funny, having worked with Paul, and then I saw Company of Strangers, and I worked with Natasha Richardson, who played Patty Hearst, mm -hmm. and she's also in Company of Strangers. I thought the movie was so funny, and I was... What, Comfort of Strangers? Comfort of Strangers. Oh, geez, they kill him at the end. This <laughs> <laughs> but the ending is just, oh, yeah, riot, laugh, riot. riot. <laughs> no, but I'm sitting in the Beverly Center, and there's, you know, as you said, there was maybe six people in the audience. Yeah. And I was laughing my head off, <laughs> and nobody... <laughs> <laughs> who else was <laughs> but you have to get paul's sense of humor he has a very perverse dark sense of humor yeah yeah and so what can i expect when i go and see a light sleeper it's dark dark uh, <laughs> <laughs> slow it's a little slow yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's a paul schrader movie it's uh -huh. his world i think it's probably his most personal film it's taken from it's based on people that he's known that I mean, he said this, and it has come. To, it came to him in a dream, and he wrote it down. Um, I like the movie. I like it. I remember talking to him about Taxi Driver, which he did. It seems now like a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to him about that picture. And at the time, he was living in Los Angeles. Uh, he and his wife had been separated. He was single for the first time in some time, and he talked about. Uh, you know, in Los Angeles, there's not an awful lot to do late at night here. Right. About all there is is Denny's and uh, porno clubs and stuff like that. Jerry's 24-hour day. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> and he said he felt like a taxi driver. And that once mm -hmm. he got this feeling, like, I guess this script came out of him in three days, he just sat down at the Underwood and started typing away, and he yeah. had it three days later. Yeah. And it went on, in my view, to become his best picture. I don't think he's ever surpassed that picture. I thought Petty Hurst mm -hmm. was a good film. But I don't think it went beyond Taxi Driver. Well, that that character in Taxi Driver is taken one step further in Light Sleeper. It's a very similar character. In fact, Willem Dafoe drives around in a town car around the city mm -hmm. delivering drugs. And instead of driving, this time he has a driver. <laughs> but it's that character at the age of 40, I think. I don't know how old Travis Bickle was, but it's like 10 years later. Yeah, yeah. Now, would you go on to do just features, or, or would you do episodic television? Again? Oh, no, I think television is great. I'm not a snob of that television. Well, I didn't say you were, but maybe you find the work. Maybe <laughs> were you, you inferring? No, no. But I thought maybe I thought maybe that you found motion picture work was coming to you. Uh, mm -hmm. The work was more available yeah, to you Yeah, I know you what you're saying. No, as a woman, uh, I think you have to stay in television. I mean, there are those few actresses that don't have to do television. But I actually like doing television. I don't mind the speed of it. Um, I wouldn't do a series right away. Mm -hmm. But a TV movie, if it was good, it just has to be good. In fact, I just finished doing a mini-series, um, six-hour, I guess they're calling it a limited-run series that Oliver Stone produced that just finished shooting today called Wild Palms. You know, I saw him with Costas last night. And if I remember correctly, they talked a little bit about that series. Mm -hmm. uh, when is that coming on? Is it is it this fall or is it a spring release? It will probably be in the sweeps in February. Yeah, yeah. He's an interesting guy. Uh, I don't know how he would be to work with, whether he would be demanding as a director or not. What would you say? I don't know either because he wasn't around. No, he wasn't around, right? <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, I'd like to know. Yeah. 
(laughs) (laughs) Oliver, get the money up front and hire somebody to do this. No, he's he's in pre-production for his uh, new movie, which is Heaven and Earth, which I really am looking forward to seeing. It's based on Lele Hayslip's uh, book about Mm -hmm. Vietnam, which I think he's hoping to shoot in Vietnam, which would be a first. Uh, So Bruce Wagner, who wrote the um, series... And is based on a comic strip in the back of Details magazine that he does. Mm-hmm. Also produced, and uh, and also Alec Ho, who's um, Oliver's usual producer. He was there. Okay. Um, so anyway, movies of television. Yeah, good idea. Movie of the week. You know, I told you before we came on Sunday night. I was home, and they came on with this swirl of uh, of Aaron Spelling called Two Thousand Malibu Road. Mm-hmm with uh, Lisa Hartman and with uh, Drew Barrymore and with um, Jennifer Beals from Flashdance and some other people. And, uh, you know, I started watching this thing, and it was all very pretty and very Malibu and very, I mean, a lot of cleavage in this picture. You know, yeah, Drew but Barrymore. was it steamy? Uh, yeah, no, no, oh. not, not really. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it wasn't, and not only that, but I kept thinking, well, this is really going to get good. Because yeah. there was a murder involved, you know, and a bit of mystery and a lawyer and a cop. I thought, this is really going to get going. And, geez, you know, two hours later, the thing finally went off. And uh, and I said, why have I invested two hours of my time in this thing? Mm-hmm. You know, you got to be careful because, they, you know, movies on television, they can really suck you in in the first five minutes. And then, yeah. if they, you know, if they got you, you can't get away from this thing. Yeah. So now the credits come on and, th- and the thing says... Uh, We'll be with us Wednesday night for the startling uh, next episode. I thought, geez, you know, I better set the tape machine until the light went. I said, wait, you don't, you don't want to watch this anymore. <laughs> what do you like to watch on on, on television? Um, oh gosh, uh, what do I watch? Well, I do watch the McLaughlin Group. I do you I really? Said Eleanor, and I think it's a riot. I'm it is funny. That. Yeah, and I I watch. I used to be addicted to studs. <laughs> what do you just kind of sit there and kick back and <laughs> <laughs> hoist a beer and <laughs> well i got i'm very mad at fox and i think they should know that they took it off at 11 o'clock in la and that was when i watched it so i don't watch it anymore now but i mean you're gonna think this is really stupid but i think it's romantic Really? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I get that thrill of the first date watching it. Yeah. I sort of live vicariously through them. And I know that they write those lines for them and all that stuff. But I think underneath it all, it's two young people meeting for yeah. the first time. Yeah. What, what is the thrill of the first date, would you think, in your view? Oh, I love first dates. What, what do you like about them? Um, well, it's just anything's possible. And you don't know anything about each other. And... You don't go into too much history on the first day. You know? mm-hmm. The second day, you find out about the mother problem or something. You know? <laughs> but the first day, everybody's on their best behavior. Yeah. What is the purpose of the first date? I guess it's just to kind of establish what ground rules a little bit. And I guess kind so. Of, uh, and I just, and there's an attraction, really. How, how do you let somebody know if there's not going to be a second date? That's why I don't date anymore. It's the right. second dates. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you don't go out anymore at all? No. <laughs> I have a steady boyfriend. Oh, okay. Good, <laughs> good. We are with Daniel Delaney, one of the stars of uh, House Sitter, which is now in release with Steve Martin and Goldie Hawn, also one of the stars of the new Paul Schrader film, which is called Light Sleeper. We will continue with Miss Delaney and eventually be joined with some of you on the toll-free exchange after these messages from the local stations. We are back with uh, Dana Delaney. You are a native of New York, New York. Well, I was born in New York, but I was raised in Connecticut. Well, almost the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> and did you go to school in Connecticut? Uh-huh. And what was your relationship with New York City living in Connecticut, the bedroom community? Uh, I used to go in to get my hair cut <laughs> <laughs> at Henry Bendel's at the Sesame. No, 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 Henri Bendel. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> <laughs> and we used to go shopping for a school clothes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember going to the Russian Tea Room and going to the Broadway shows with my mother and father. Great things. Mm-hmm. My, I mean, it's probably terribly elitist to say, but my idea of New York was between... Grand Central Station and 57th Street. That was about it. 
I didn't go as far south as Grand Central Station. <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly that far south. I went 51st Street to 59th Street and from uh, 1st Avenue to 7th Avenue. That was New York City to me. Yeah. The rest of it did not exist. And I loved it and still do, by the way. Yeah, I still do, too. And when you, went, when you finally went there to work, how difficult a thing was that? Did you have jobs other than actor when mm -hmm. you... Uh, did you wait tables and... Uh, it was a very difficult transition for me, and I was surprised how difficult it was uh, because I knew New York. But it's very different living there on your own, supporting yourself for the first time. Um, I didn't really know anybody. I didn't have any, anybody could help me. Mm -hmm. you know, was, your father and mother are not in the business? Not in the business, and they weren't supporting me. You know, I was told to, you know, get a job. Get a job. Thing, right? And I lived in a tiny railroad flat over on 81st and East End for $125 a month. And... Um, yeah, what did I do? I cocktail waitress. Um, I bartended for one day down on Wall Street. Were you not a great mixologist? Well, I actually was a very good bartender, but the guy who owned it was Mafia, I'm sure. And at the end of the day, he uh, said to me, put your hand on the bar. And I said, why? He said, just put your hand on the bar. And I did. And he took out a hammer and he said, if I see you giving free drinks to anyone, I'm going to um, smash every one of your fingers. And, of course, I'd been giving free drinks all day long. Oh, you had been? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> I'm Irish. <laughs> so I never went back the next day. I, I don't so blame scared. you. Who wants to get, yeah, right, right. <laughs> I never even got paid for it. Wow. <laughs> I did that. I sold tickets um, at the Met for the Metropolitan Opera mm -hmm. and ABT. And I worked in an antique store in Madison Avenue. Did you know? Mm -hmm. Knew nothing about antiques. I still don't. Such a racket. Really? <laughs> yes. They make up everything. Oh, you're kidding. No, they do. You mean Queen Anne didn't sit here? <laughs> it's not even a Queen Anne chair. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sell anything at all? No, no, I was horrible. I, I was really not happy nine to five. I, I just kind of shriveled with those hours. It was not good for me. Now, 81st and East End Avenue in New York, that's a pretty nice neighborhood. It was uh, very much, it was sort of Yorktown, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and it's up near Gracie Mansion almost. Yeah, it I was I used to have very good friends that lived at 82nd and East End Avenue really? in the condominium, yeah. This was not a nice, this was... When you say a railroad flat. You know, it was just one long room with gotcha. a bathroom in the back and mm -hmm. rarely hot water. You know, those horrible, I mean, everybody has their stories, but those horrible mornings in the dead of winter in New York, and there's no hot water, and you Awful. don't have any money, and to take a cab, and you've got to count every penny to get to the subway, and all that stuff, you know. It, it, it's exciting when you look back on it. Builds character, That's Dana. Right. Builds That's Builds right. character, <laughs> builds resolve, <laughs> builds resourcefulness. Yeah. And then how about the hot summer? When you can't get a breath of air yeah. in the joint, you know, and the cockroaches are everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, you turn on the light, and there are your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are here. <laughs> I remember I, I was lucky. When I lived in Gotham, I had a four-story brownstone with a cellar. Mm -hmm. Well, the cellar was full of cockroaches all summer long. I used to throw meat down there just to keep them happy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want these suckers upstairs. They start moving furniture in New York, New York. We are with Dana Delaney, one of the stars of a new picture out now, the Paul Schroeder, uh, Schrader film, which is called Light Sleeper. Uh, I'm going to take your calls here with Miss Dana Delaney on the toll-free exchange. We're at 800-756-0852. That is 800-756-0852. we got free drinks on the house from the Irish lady tonight. We will continue with more of you on the toll-free exchange after news headlines, station identification, whatever the stations have planned here on the ultimate broadcasting system. Okay, we are back with uh, Dana Delaney, one of the stars of a new picture which is called Light Sleeper, uh, which is in release now in New York. You know, I saw you Sunday night, or Saturday night, on the Larry Sanders show, the Gary Shandling thing, and you had just a teeny tiny part. Yeah. 
but it was so cute. Do, do it for the audience because I want you to tell what your car was. <laughs> Well, you know, it was one of those things where I uh, got out of the shower. This is just a little background. The phone... I like this background. <laughs> <laughs> and the phone rang, and it was um, Gary Shandling and saying, would you come and do my show? And I thought, well, wow, I'm flattered. Sure, you know, I'll be happy to. Yeah. I said, when? He said, in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> See, Gary works real close to yeah. time over there. <laughs> Let me dry my hair. <laughs> so I went over there, and, and the, well, the funny thing was, they had to, they had an hour. We had an hour to work with me because I was going on to do the Dennis Miller show. So it was so surreal to do the Larry Sanders show, and then I got back in the car and went and drove to do Dennis Miller for real. Mm -hmm. which, and there was absolutely no difference between the two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and by the way, folks, the Gary Shandling show is a spoof of, of talk, talk shows, shows, and the Dennis Miller show was a talk show. There's no difference between no, the two. I mean, I, I sat on the fake set of, of Larry Sanders, which is acting like the fake set of you know Dennis Miller, and he, he, I sat there and talked about movies I had coming up, which are the same ones I talked to Dennis about. And then, then afterwards, we got up, and he said, you know, just act like we're talking and so i just started talking for real about my house i know <laughs> that's really what my, i'm in a lawsuit over my house you're really and, and truly are yes. in real life yes why well I, it's over now it's well done. but why did you have it in the first place um because um you know if you drop something i'm going to pursue it because because <laughs> i love stuff about houses was this a renovation thing by any chance no 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 no, no. no i i it, there was two things. One, when I bought the house, um, the owner and the re realtor n knew that um, one of them, yes, they actually did both. They admit to that. They knew that the house below me was going to build up and block my view. Aha, uh -huh. they, they did not disclose me. something. Did There's a law. You must it. disclose, right. right? Disclosure. So we settled that out of court. And the other thing, which I mentioned in the Larry Sanders show, is that. Um, because of poor construction, a one whole wall in my house during those heavy rains, mm -hmm. which is a concrete wall, was weeping like a miracle. Mm -hmm. And I was joking that I was going to start selling tickets to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, is your view now blocked by said house below you? No, I ended up having to buy the said house below me at an inflated price wow. to save my view. Wow, and what is it that you look at? Um, the Pacific Ocean. I have a, a slight bit of the ocean, but also just trees and a playground, and mm -hmm. just more of an expanse. You know, it was mostly because I'd lose my privacy. Right. You know. And um, so now you have the two houses, or you tore one down? I have the two houses. I rent one out. Okay. It's just a, I don't want to sound like I'm some land baron. It's just a tiny little bungalow. I know, an eensy beansy. Yeah, yeah. Teeny, teeny. I, I understand. Yeah, you know, I thought maybe it was something about renovation. As one who has renovated three houses, I can tell you, don't ever do it. Mm. It's brutal. Yeah. It's easier to tear down the old one and build a new one than it is to renovate the old one. And they make you crazy. Yeah. You know, I... As I say, I've done three of them, and every time I do it, I find myself in the second year of a three-month job. You know, it's craziness. Anyway, all America's on the line here. Here is Mike in Skokie, Illinois. Hello. What is it? Have you ever been across the sea to Ireland? It sounds a little bit like that. I don't know what it is. I'm waiting to see if Give a boy... Give us a clue, Mike. <laughs> I don't think Mike is there. Okay, Mike. Get a life. Take care of yourself. Bye bye. Mike's question was: We should have known this. How do you get from New? How did you get from New York to L.A.? Probably on an airplane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, George, Baltimore. Hello. Hello. Hi, George. Hi, Tom. Hi, Dana. Hi, Good. George. That sounds like a wind-up uh, nativity manger I had. Yes, yeah, something. I. Uh, it sounded a little bit like. Have you ever been across the seas to Ireland? But I. I don't know. I don't know. 
know. Uh, yeah, Dan was on the uh, interview with Bob Costas last. That was pretty exciting. So, you know, got up on the chair and started bouncing around. Oh, yes. I was just in one of those moods. <laughs> yeah, I served in Vietnam uh, for a year. I understand you took a trip over there. Yes, I went Part twice. Part China Beach. Show. Where were you in Vietnam? Mostly up and down the coast from, from uh, I guess, uh, Saigon up to, I think it was called... Uh, Quinion, mm -hmm. about halfway up. What mm -hmm. year, what year were you there? Sixty-eight into nine. Uh huh. So you I were mostly driving. I think I covered about fifteen thousand miles over there. Yeah. Driving supplies and personnel around. Yeah, but no problem because they have all those multi-lane roads over there, huh? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> we built everything that was over there at the time. I know we did. <laughs> we had a power station they built, water treatment. Have you thought about going back to visit? Yeah, I guess so. even in the Army, I flew over on a DC-8 stretch with 250 other guys. Mm -hmm. I had regular meals served. I came back on the exact same plane. It was a Seaboard World Airlines. Do you mm -hmm. know that mm -hmm. exist? I think the plane exists, but I don't know where. I think, I think I read somewhere where that aircraft is parked over in the Mojave Desert where they have all those surplus uh, uh, um, airplanes. Right, huh? Airliners. So it made that war easier. Was guys come back every day, and mm -hmm. you know, like uh, you see them on the way back. We stopped in uh, Japan. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't. You know, I, I got back, and I didn't really do any protesting. So I guess I should have. I was just relieved to get back. Mm, that's all right. Thanks for calling, George. Okay, Dad. I'm glad you came back safe. Right. Okay. Where did you go in Vietnam? Um, the first trip I started in. Uh, Hanoi went south, uh, Da Nang, Hue, Saigon, uh, down to the Delta, Coochie. No, I didn't get, did I get yeah, Coochie, yeah, to the tunnels. Mm -hmm. um, Let me ask you about Hue. I remember during the war that was always referred to as the old imperial city of right. Hue. Mm -hmm. And I know that it took a lot of bombardment, a lot of shell fire in the war. Has it been restored? Is it once again uh, grand and splendid? No, I don't think it will no. be grand and splendid no. again. I mean, you can still see the, the um, Emperor's Palace mm -hmm. and, and things like that. I had the most wonderful guide in, in Hawaii named Mai, a beautiful, beautiful woman, who um, oh, she took us to this dinner at the Emperor's home, where the Emperor's mother lived and died mm -hmm. until just recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had this, you know, ten-course meal and... It was just for me and my boyfriend, and they, they dressed us in the emperor's robes. And, of course, he, my boyfriend couldn't fit into them, but <laughs> I felt like a true... Well, what was it? Was it a small emperor, or you have, tiny, a, or you have a large boyfriend? <laughs> well, he's large also, <laughs> both. And then musicians playing for us, and it was just the two of us. It was really wonderful. And why would she do that for you? Well, it's actually a tourist attraction. Anyone can do Oh, it. I see. You pay... Okay. Uh, Eighty dollars, which is a lot of money over there. Yes, it is. Yes, a lot, and um, they, you know, they put on a little show for you. When you were in Saigon, did children beg? Do they? Do the children still beg on the streets in Saigon? Yes, they do. Although I must say there was a marked difference between 1988 and 80 and 91. A lot less begging. But the, the country changed so much in three years that I'm sure. Now that a year has gone by, it's changed even more. Yeah, see, I, I was there in the 60s when the war was really on. I went as a reporter for Westinghouse Television. Then Governor William Scranton of Pennsylvania was sent there by then President Lyndon Johnson, so I went on that tour. Mm -hmm. Then I went back with the late-night television show after the war was over. Uh, but we still had a presence there. Uh -huh. And we went all over the place. We went to Chu Lai, we went to Hue, we went to Da Nang. We went all over the place. And I was, I was really astounded by the kindness of the people there, mm -hmm. uh, by the beauty of the children there, yeah. by the great food in the restaurants, especially in the 60s when the influence of the French was still very much dominant there, yeah. and by the smoke in the air from all the motor scooters. I, I could not believe the exhaust fumes that were generated in that city by motor scooters. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's still beautiful. The people are still beautiful and so friendly, lovely, hard-working people. Mm -hmm. 
very hard work, industrious. Um, the food <laughs> leaves something to be desired, except for Hue. You know, Hue is known for their food. Mm -hmm. So that was quite good. Hanoi, obviously, we didn't get to. The only one of us allowed up there was Fonda. Yeah. She was the only one that got there during <laughs> the war. And it, t it turned out to be a big hit in her career, as, yeah, you, as yeah. you know. Hanoi is like Vietnam used to be. In fact, uh, my boyfriend wanted to stay there and live because he had all these grand green fantasies. Of, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Writing a novel and uh -huh. having his, um, you know, servant girl. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's exquisite. It's so beautiful. It looks like Paris, you know, but it's laid out like Paris. and It's got the green trees and, and the people are still more innocent there. We are with Dana Delaney. We'll get to more of you on the toll-free exchange after these messages from the local stations. We're back with Dana Delaney. Here is uh, Kirk in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello. Hey, what you doing? Well, I'm sitting here waiting for you, Kirk. Well, That's I'm, what I'm doing. I am very sorry, Tom. I just want to tell you that, uh, Dana. Yes. I just want to let you know that uh, we're boot makers out here. Mm -hmm. um, we're transfers out of Texas, and uh, the guys were sitting around. I said, "Let's make her a pair of shoes." Wow. So we need to know a few things, and uh, that's about it. That's all we want. Tom no. always wants to know. Now, this is not a foot fetish. I was just about to ask that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys don't want pictures of old Dana's feet sent Thanks over there. Thanks a lot. I yeah. appreciate that. You don't uh, have to send photographs back, Dana. <laughs> uh, what do you need to know? Well, are you a boot, uh, a, what is it, a mule, or a, a, a pump woman? What, what kind of... What, what would you like us to make for you? It'd take about two weeks to get it to you. So. What, what's your best item? Actually, right now, what's hot is our, our little mules. Our little, we have a little slip on. It's kind of uh, everything we make is custom. I live in mules. That's all I wear. You're serious? Yeah, I am. Are you? Wait, wait, hold it. I'm going to go see what she's yes, wearing. Yes, look. Uh, I'll put my foot up. Put, put your, your foot, foot up. Here. What, what, what do you think, Tom? No, no, she's got mules on, I swear. And, and by the way, she needs new ones. Yes, they're falling apart. Man, these are really shot. These are shoddy. <laughs> Man, two pair then, eh? No, one's enough. <laughs> okay. Le do you, do you mind leather or what? Because we get a lot of people that are particular about this. Well, no, I don't mind leather. Are, is leather mules comfortable? Uh, well, that's the only really way. To, it's just that the animal rights people get upset. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, so yeah. if you want, we can. Yeah, but now you see what you've done. Is now, now I'm in Now all of position. a sudden, Dana, Dana's a killer. <laughs> she hates animals, you know? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> you, you decide, Kirk. Bad, Tom. You'll send leather, Kirk. <laughs> okay, send le Okay, give me a size and I'll send them to Tom's office. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. What about you, Tom? You in the mood? Mood for uh, maybe some wing And I have a bit of a narrow foot. B, a B. Oh, good. Oh, but well, you've gotten all the guys excited now, so. <laughs> uh, what about you? Are, are you into uh, some boots or something? Uh, no, I, not, not, I don't wear, I don't wear shoes. I wear these, um, like, well, no, no, I wear like Reeboks and stuff, you know? <laughs> okay, well, I, I don't. Tell yeah, I me mean, when it, when the mules show up and your shoes are you there. Up there. <laughs> no, I won't. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you do. If you pass a guy in Las Vegas who's sitting on the street and says he's a Vietnam veteran looking for work, make him a pair of shoes because I can afford to buy some. And I, and I appreciate your consideration, but help out a buddy over there who needs some help for me, would you? I'll, I'll do my best, Tom. Thank you, Kirk. Thank, Thank you, Dana. Okay. Uh, Tom, you have a nice time. All, All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So when the mules come in here, mm -hmm. you know, we'll Bob and I will just drink some champagne out of them, and then we'll send them over, okay? okay? Uh, here's Doug Elgin, Illinois. Hello. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Dana. Hi, Hi Doug. Doug. Uh, God, Tom, I'm, I'm sorry. You're leaving in November. I really love your show. These things happen. Yes, I know. I was just going to comment on, before you were talking about the Larry Sanders show, I, I, I think HBO is doing some really great stuff in, you know, their programming department. They I think, sure are. I think it was great. I think Dana did, did a great job. Thank you. Dana looked great on that show, too. Yeah, it was on again tonight, as a matter of fact. Oh, yeah? It was? Oh, I missed it again. It was, and uh, China Beach, there was, a, there was a great loss. It was a great show. 
Thanks. Yeah, let's talk about all the stuff that's going off. It's not on anymore. Let's, let's talk all about that stuff. I don't know, though. How, how, how Sitter was a great movie. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. That's go House Sitter's going off, too. <laughs> no, 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 no. And Paul Schrader, I was going to mention Paul Schrader. Didn't he do um, a little movie called Cat People? Too? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Very good. It was a... Uh, oh, well. Do you want to say anything about Cat People? Huh? Do you want to say anything about cat people? No, I was just, I was just kind of, I guess I was kind of wandering out there. I was going to say, Dana, though, I, was, I don't know, um, do you have any other movies you're making right now at the moment? Or? No, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do next. Do you have any more TV or? She's trying to figure out what she's going to do next. Hey, Doug? Yeah, good night. <laughs> no, 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 before <laughs> no, 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 no. you, <clears throat> before you go. Yeah. Cat People, was that the one with Natasha Kinski? Yeah, Natasha Kinski and um, John Hurd. Yeah, I mm -hmm. like that picture. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was a good show, Cat People. With uh, uh, O'Toole, what's her name? Also? Yeah, Annette, Annette O'Toole. Annette yeah, O'Toole, wonderful actress. Good. Yeah, good picture. All right, Doug, thanks for good. calling. Thanks, Tom. All right, bye-bye. You know, whatever happened to Natasha Kinski, she was hot, Hot, hot. Well, she got married. She yeah, well, so a married. lot of people get married. But I think he lived over in the far Middle East somewhere. I'm not sure. I don't know. I know nothing. I know that they're not together anymore. Let's gossip about that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what's the word uh, in the in the acting community out here about the Woodman, Woody Allen? I thought you were sick of hearing about that, Tom. <laughs> not from your lips, Dana. <laughs> Uh, I think everyone's just really sad about it. Yeah. It's just very unfortunate. I don't think the molestation charges are true. I don't. My instinct is no, but we won't know until we have to Hey, we're never going to know. Wait, when you're right, it's not going to go to We're court. never going to know. No. But my feeling is that those charges are not true. Here is Elizabeth, Atlanta, Georgia. Hello. Hi, Tom. You have a great taste and guest. Thanks. I sure do. <laughs> I uh, thought China Beach was an extraordinary show. It was probably the best drama that has ever been on television, in my opinion. Thank you. I was a high school senior who had dreamed about writing since I was about three years old until I saw some of the teleplays written by John Sackford Young and Carol Flint. Mm -hmm. I thought I could never be that good. Oh, you got to try. <laughs> <laughs> you can use them as role models. I know, I know. It was discouraging and inspiring at the same time. Yeah. I was wondering, they were so fortunate to have found you for the role. It was a perfect coupling of, of brilliant writing and brilliant acting. I was wondering, do writers and actors ever network and sort of work together and develop projects or tailor-make scripts for particular actors? Yeah, they do. I mean, I, I came to China Beach totally cold. Um, when I read the script, I felt as if it had been written for me. I mean, I really clicked with it. Uh, but yes, uh, people always develop things together. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I love seeing all, uh, seeing everything you're in, and uh, I think you're a great talent. Thank you. Okay, good night, Elizabeth. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Last thing a tuna fish hears that sound right there when they close the can. We'll be right back with Dana Delaney <laughs> <laughs> after these messages. We are back with Dana Delaney, uh, one of the stars of China Beach. Listen, I hope that you win an Emmy Award on Sunday night. I really mean that. Oh, thanks. Um, I've got one. I figure everybody should get one. You I know have what I mean? one. Oh, yeah? Am I being greedy if I want to? No, that's okay. I'll <laughs> tell you, I have two. I have one for the network and one for a local station in New York where I did the news good, and they gave mm -hmm. me an Emmy for that. Um, so I hope you win. You know who has never received an Emmy Award, and I did not know this until I read the uh, until I read a magazine about satellite television this morning. We all know who is the one. Susan Lucci has never gotten yeah. it. Do you know that after I don't know how many years of murder she wrote, Angela Lansbury has never received an Emmy Award. Well, I know because that's my category. So every year we're up together. It's ridiculous that she's never gotten one. Of course she, it is. She gets a lot of Golden Globe Awards. And I, I'm i a huge fan of Angela Lansbury. How could you not be? Right. She's a, true. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing... Nice. By the way, this magazine is called Satellite TV Week, and they list all the categories, and in your category, you're the favorite to win. Oh, I don't think that's true. I, in this magazine, you're their favorite to win. Mm, well, I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't yeah. guarantee that you're going to get it. Yeah. 
but um, I don't expect to. Win. But you never know. Anyway, um, are these people uh, waiting online here? Yeah. Okay. Here is uh, Linda in Buffalo, New York. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I really enjoyed China Beach. I just I thought that was the greatest picture. Um, I was just wondering real quickly, how was that aging process? Um, how did they? Um, how was the makeup involved in that? And were you kind of mm. shocked when you were like, you know, <laughs> to be forty? Kind of talk about this. Yeah. You know, you know, Linda, forty ain't that old. I know I us. am forty. Yeah. Well, I'm listen, I hate to know, be hanging by my young. neck since mm. I'm forty. For well, being young, I mean, I was wondering, you know, what mm. did the, what did it feel? Like? Okay, well, very quickly. That, that's a good question, actually. Um, the the challenge was, you see, I'm thirty six. Really. But I was playing uh, twenty four on the show, so we had to like extra age me. And I have a very round, youthful face, so you couldn't do too much to me. It was mostly just hair and, and shadow, you know, gray to hair and shadow. That was it. Okay, Linda, time's gone. Thanks for calling. Dana, thanks for being Thank here. You, I'll be watching you on Sunday night at the Emmy Awards on the Fox TV Network. Dana Delaney, motion picture and television actress. I'm T.S. This is the Tuesday night radio show out of Southern California. And best of all, on many of these stations... We are coming right back. Thanks for listening, everybody.